Okay, uh, you know what I'm already gonna do? I'm just gonna stir the fat because it's always important to stir it in the right way. And um, you cannot just stir it like, like this, but always go from the center to the outside and then make like a, uh, like a, like a small tornado, which goes in. And you need to be cautious because you don't want to have a lot of oxygen in there. Uh, and then I do this every day. I stir it every day, the fat. Sometimes more times a day in order to keep it uh, happy and healthy, the indigo fat. And now at this point we actually have uh, five small fats running and one big one uh yeah but if you if you have any questions already actually you can already just ask me things before we start before we have everybody uh, joining i'm just uh waiting to see how this yeah <laughs> okay. will happen because it's like i really wanted to do maybe some indigo dying by myself someday and ah. uh, so it's good to see that, like at least see it like, right now live in a video how it works and can like to be able to ask things when you don't understand them. So yeah, yeah, yeah. You uh, you can always uh, you know um, if you order a kit, I yeah. always keep contact with the people who okay. are trying to keep contact. And then yeah. if you if you I'm also the aim is to do another Zoom workshop and really like do a Zoom workshop where everybody has a do it yourself kit again. We did it before and it was really nice and then uh, we can make the indigo fat together so you, you're sure you, you, you're doing it the, the right way and then and then we make a whatsapp group and mm -hmm. the people can also post questions and the people can learn from each other yeah so that's, that's, that sounds really good yeah it's a new thing actually it's a corona development yeah. so. <laughs> okay uh thanks this is the link we have on the website maybe just start and make sure you record okay because the link is only working when you put it in the app or have zoom downloaded on your computer otherwise it will stay that uh the link's invalid okay yeah 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 I don't know. No, okay. Oh, guys, something went wrong. I don't know what. Uh, we we do seem to have more people joining, but yeah, the uh, link is not working somehow. The the link that was posted on this page. Oh. So uh, there's only only if you put in the uh, the ID, you can you can enter the meeting. Ah, yeah. so we need to share the ID. The yeah. ID is on the website as well. In the oh, the ID yeah. is on there as well. So not everybody understands maybe that they have to put that in. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So only the smart people join. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, cool. <laughs> um, so I'm just going to start, um, you know, telling you something about Blueprint. So my name is Celia and um, um, about 10 years ago I used to work as a designer for Levi's and Indigo grabbed my you know full attention and I decided to um, go to Japan and learn with the master and it was all started because I got a, a, a artist assignment from Denham and I said, I want to do something, you know, for you with Indigo. And then I said, just pay me a ticket to Japan. And I went to Japan and learned the craft. And um, then I returned and I started with a small fat, like really small. And then it became bigger and bigger. And uh, yeah, in the end, I now have, you know, a blueprint with, where uh, Indigo is my uh, specialization. But... I also started a production atelier in Amsterdam where we can do the bigger uh, bulk production and we work with people who haven't worked for a long time. So it's like a social and sustainable production. Um, but everything's slow 
so nothing hurry hurried and um uh, actually what what i i make my living of this so i make my living with uh creating um yeah custom made products and collections and interior um product but and also with uh giving workshops hi <laughs> um so at this moment obviously the workshops which are sometimes only 10 people and really intimate in this studio uh and sometimes from 40 to like 130 in wherever in the world it's a bit hard obviously but i really like connecting with you through this you know in this digital way uh although it's different i'm i'm still really happy that you can you know now visit my studio from far and uh, you can ask me any question you like. I'm very open and I, I, I've got nothing to hide. <laughs> and uh, yeah. So in this uh, Indigo vet, I'll first tell you something about the Indigo. Then, oh, I've also got uh, actually Nina here. Nina, come in the picture. Here's hey. Nina. <laughs> Nina, come on, Nina. Yeah. Well, well, okay. Do you all see Nina as well? Yeah. Oh, it's okay. Yes. It's good, yes. good, good. So Nina uh, did uh, Nina did an internship or like an apprenticeship uh, with me as well. She's a true denim uh, girl, and uh, yeah, she still works for me uh, sometimes, right? Yeah. So we do stuff together, and this is how uh, I work with a lot of people. They first learn the the skill, and then if they're you know if they fit the team, we uh, we continue to work like uh, you know whenever is needed um yeah um uh, do you like it in the uh, in blueprint studio oh, i love it here <laughs> right that's cool okay. so oh, well, let's talk about the indigo uh so the indigo actually sorry the indigo that i work with is only natural indigo i don't use any synthetics uh I only did that once on purpose, and it was not a nice outcome. Um, good. Mm, it's good. Yeah. Well, to me, I, I feel uh, that I want if I work with the stuff, if it's on my hands, it's safe, so I don't, you know, have to wear a mask. Um, and in the indigo, I've got indigo. I've got uh, hey, Robin. <laughs> Hello, <laughs> nice. So in the indigo, there's water, there's uh, indigo, obviously, and then there's uh, my wonderful assistant, Nina. <laughs> What's up? There's, uh, this is uh, fruit sugar. So look, I'm actually eating this. And uh, this I'm not going to eat because it's not such a nice taste. It's uh, lime, slate lime and water so you need that fruit sugar uh, in order to for the indigo to become soluble and then you need the lime to push up the ph level uh, of the water so it becomes alkaline otherwise it doesn't work um so yeah i start with very hot water like 60 degrees and uh i first work with the indigo uh create a box for the knickers um i make the indigo uh, hydrated so you need to put it into a small um container with marbles or stones or whatever and some water hot water and then you need to shake it really hard there that the nina op the magnetron and uh nina is going to show you the container um <laughs> right so it's really easy it's like this it's you know you see the marbles then i put the indigo in there I put water in it and um we shake it like hard like that for a minute and then i pour the indigo fluids into the um into the vat into the water and then i add the the lime the slaked lime and i add the fructose uh do you, does anybody have a question about this you can unmute yourself, sir, because we're not with a lot, so I'm fine doing questions, answers, blah, blah. No one? Nope, that's fine. Yeah? 
Okay, so uh, then uh, when that's all done, I, I stir it a little bit. You need to leave it for an hour and not touch it. And then after an hour, you could use it, but it's even better to, do, to use it the next day. So not lose it immediately. Um, yeah, so then it's actually uh, done. And then when it's done, you need to, um, maybe I can take you with me now. So, uh, so if you look into the indigo vat, you see this flower. I call it a flower. It's called a flower actually. And um, if you look at it, I can see if it's how the the the, the quality is. So if it's a very light flower, it's not so good. If it has a lot of blue, it's good. So we have um, like a couple of indigo fats here. And you see, this is a very happy one. It's really nice, like frothy, you see? And uh, yeah, from that you can see if, it's, if you have a healthy fat or not. And um, if it's very see-through, you need to adjust the pH level and you need to pour in some fructose or some lime. And you always need to stir it every day. And if you don't, then it becomes uh, unhappy. <laughs> so I'm going to try and wait. Actually, while I've got you in my hands, I'll give you... It's a very tiny studio we have. So here's a production working on fabrics. There's Nina. Nina. And then uh, uh, is somebody asking something or not? Noah? This is kind of the dry part. So here we do the, you know, we have the books and the things that we need. Here's some uh, nice uh, memorabilia. <laughs> and we've got uh, lots of screens to do the screen printing, which we also do. And then uh, obviously uh, all the indigo fats. And here we do the rinsing, which is a very important part. Some socks hanging there, ready. Hello, welcome. <laughs> Um, so, oh yeah, and then we've got a, a, a screen, how do you call it, uh, to, to make a screen. Is it a flat seam? So, next to Indigo Dying, we also do the screen printing on some stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so, we make screens. And we've also got a machine to make the screens. And, uh, and then, obviously, there's a sewing machine. So you don't really need much more than that. This is a small second floor for uh, interns who need to stay over. <laughs> um, so yeah, today, so I just, for the people who just joined, I just explained what we have in our illegal fat uh, and that it's all natural. Okay, yeah, I'm just closer. Yeah. And today, uh, what I wanted to do is actually um, show you. Um, so we do over dyeing of um, um, garments, but also of shoes, but also of different things. We're just trying to get the yeah. We've got you back. Hey, left hand twill. Nice you to have you with us. <laughs> Um, so uh, we do different techniques with the indigo, just, uh, you know, just um, uni dyeing, over dyeing, but also uh, with prints. So we can do prints with, obviously, with the uh, tie-dye uh, effects or like shibori effects. Um, but we also work with katazomi, which is a Japanese uh, technique. And especially for this global denim hang, I thought it would be really nice because um, uh, last like denim days, uh, 2018, I believe, and also in Amsterdam and in New York, I did a special uh, printed bandana and it was kind of like a souvenir. And I know 
couple of denim people made it and I thought it would be nice, although we're not together, to make a souvenir bandana, especially for this uh, edition. So I made, made an update and uh, um, maybe we'll not see that. Okay. <laughs> I want to show you actually how it works because it's kind of like a, it's quite a special process. So does anybody know what Katazomi is? You can unmute that. Eh? I'm fine if you if you want to answer and you oh, can no, just answer. Chat, the chat. Oh, the chat. Oh, it's the chat. Well, the answer's short. No, don't know what it is. No, no. Okay. okay. Please help us. <laughs> Even a Japanese doesn't understand it. No, the Japanese does not know. Oh my God. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? I love to tell you. So uh, actually, Katazomi is. Um, and like at the Edo period, you were not allowed to do like, a, there, there was this really hot thing in Japan, which was uh, actually worldwide, it was brocade um, fabrics. And in Japan, you were not allowed to use, you know, really nice colors or really nice golden threads. So the Japanese, they're so smart and, you know, inventive. They made their own uh, way to make nice patterns. And it was just purely working with cotton, indigo and, uh, what they had for hand was rice paste. So I've got some nice antique examples of kimono fabrics right here. Can you see? This is like the white part is, is, has been resisted with rice paste and the indigo obviously is dyed. And then it's obviously in a Japanese way, front and back exactly the same, which is amazing because it's really, really hard to align. Um, in Japan, I actually went to see a Katazomi master and uh, he did this, um, only this, only this technique. So this one, for instance, is also super nice. Uh, it's a really nice, cool pattern. These are all antique kimono fabric because you can see from the width of the fabric that it's a, a, a kimono panel. Now, I don't know if you can help me out from Japan, but they, they seem to say that it's like one ninth of a tatami mat size, mm -hmm. do you know? <laughs> Sorry, I'm pure Japanese, but I don't even know the size of tatami. Oh, <laughs> okay. Well, you know what? We've got Google, right? <laughs> no sweat, no sweat. <laughs> this, this is the last, uh, a really cool example. It looks like an ikat. Mm. And uh, it's not it's not the ikat. It was actually it done with. Kamen uh, opnemen, dus uh, dan zou het wel goed om het daarna nog te laten zien. Yeah. Highlights kan je ook ervan maken of zo. Yeah. Hey Lennart, zit je een beetje te doorheen te kletsen? <laughs> nee, ik moet me ook muten. <laughs> <laughs> nee, it's fine, it's fine. No, I'm gonna um, mute myself. I'm mute myself. Sorry. It's okay. Oh, it's just mute. Uh, so the, the, the examples I just showed you, they were all made with uh, stencils and the stencil paper, it's uh, obviously Japanese way, it's made out of uh, mulberry uh, leaves from the mulberry tree and it's this really cool paper and you're not here to smell it but it smells like, Nina, what does it smell like? Come in. <laughs> Oh, very smoky. It's, it smells like, like smoked bacon or something. <laughs> or smoked salmon. No. So what they do, and this is a really rough stencil I made. Um, you cut it out and then you, uh, whoop, you, oh, the phone almost dropped. Oh, yeah. So you cut it out of the stencil and then you push uh, so you push this rice paste through. So actually, this rice paste, the, this recipe, I can actually eat, and it's quite—it's not bad. You can make little pancakes out of it as well. So you push this through this, um, and then you have the fabric 
and you probably won't see it, but there's a print on there now. And then uh, that's a resist. And I will show you now how it works when, I, when you dye this. So um, I'm going to dye it. And um, meanwhile, uh, yeah, if you want, you can ask me some questions. Because I'll do like, uh, like six dips. Can everybody see the fat? Yeah. Okay. okay, so normally I would make the fabric wet, but in this case I'm not doing that because it's, uh, you know, we have the rice paste on there, so I want to keep it on there as good as possible. So Salomon, I know you did this in New York. You know how to do this, right? So when you, when you dip fabric into indigo, you never want to go like this. Oof. Because if you would do that, you get a lot of oxygen in there. And at the moment the oxygen hits the indigo, it starts oxidizing. So it starts working. So you do not want to do that. So you always want to be nice and easy. And then this is here. This one, this is very hard to get it in correctly. Cool. So yeah, so Nina will help and, and take down the other bits. Take my hand. Yeah, my bits will snail. So we're going in quite fast. You can't see it now. You just have to okay, come on. Yeah. <laughs> so now the bandana is in the in the indigo. And we'll leave it in there normally uh, for cotton or cellulose fibers. 60 seconds, but now only 30 seconds. Uh, so we'll have to wait 30 seconds. And uh, why now 30 seconds? Because otherwise the, the rice base will fall off. And um, this indigo pad is cold at this moment because it's, it's, I didn't make it just now. It's, this indigo fat is partly a fat that, that we already had for some weeks and partly a new fat. So I always update my fat and I can keep my fat for like three months or something, the big one. So now if I take it out, you will see, it's green, yellow, and we're gonna let it oxidize. And you cannot see it right really correctly yet. I don't know if this good gelukt is. Yeah. And once it's blue, once it's turning slightly blue with this Kapazomi technique, you can go back in again. So the fun part with this one is what I wanted to do is to show you, so it started off white, right? So you think there's nothing there, but there actually is. So we're going back in again. And now it's okay. Now it's like heavy enough, so you can go back in slowly. And then with each dip, you build up the color. So if I would just do one dip, you get a super light blue color. If you do like several um, dips, so it becomes darker and darker. So for this one, I want to do about like five or six dips. So um, yeah, take a sip of your tea. <laughs> yep, <laughs> take your time. You maybe can go to the toilet, <laughs> have a little nap. <laughs> oh yeah, I'll take a bit of wine. We've got a wine o'clock here already, cheers. What, what kind of paper was it again that you made the stencil out of? Mulberry, um, for, it's made from the mulberry leaves, from a mulberry tree. And the reason, and then the, a nice detail that I didn't tell you, is that the mulberry leaves, they're stuck together uh, with uh, the juice of the khaki fruit. And the khaki fruit, it uh, makes sure that it's water resistant. Uh, so in that way, it's a super sustainable paper because you can reuse it and reuse it. So actually in Japan, where we visited, the guy, the Katazomi artist, he had like really nice old patterns. And they, these stencils, they were like, like ancient, you know, they were, they were kept for so long in a, in a special library. And um, 
nice detail as well that in Japan they used to have you know this and still actually they have people coming together once a year the Katazomi masters and they make a decision on what patterns will be used for that year to go on the kimonos and then they choose the patterns and that's it you know nothing more that's just it so now I'm going to go in for a third dip so normally when you do a normal indigo dip, you go in 60 seconds with cotton and you go out 60 seconds with a regular cotton with a lightweight cotton. Is it like a canvas? Like, uh, you know, the shoes you have from Japan, uh, Ryo, you show me the converses. Well, they were like a pain in the ass to die because <laughs> the canvas is super, super thick and really, really heavy. So it's like... Uh, quite a tough job and it takes a long while to oxidize so you know it takes takes a lot of time right now I'm going back up again I'm going a bit faster because I don't want the complete print to fall off so now you really like okay this just looks like a plain piece of cotton but it will be okay how many dips did I do it's a miracle Anybody knows? Yeah, 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 okay, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. Three, huh? Yeah, three, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Somebody's paying attention. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go back in for the form. So obviously, this is a massive fat. This is like a hundred twenty liter uh, container, uh, but you can also do really nice stuff with just the eight liter one and when we sell do-it-yourself kits you can really easily just do it yourself for like if you have like 30 grams or something and then if you want to go bigger you go for a uh, for 250 grams you can make you know you can do quite a lot of stuff with it you can do i think with 250 grams you can do about 10 t-shirts but in this fat in a big one it needs about uh, 750 to a kilo of indigo and indigo is very, uh, you know, it doesn't come cheap. The reason for that is that it's a very long process to, to you know, actually get to the natural indigo. Because it takes about nine months from seed to, to the pigment. And, uh, yeah, you've got different qualities. So you can go, like, for shitty quality. <laughs> and shitty quality, mostly, most of the time means... Oh, I found indigo naturally for a really good price. And you go like, this is ace. Then you get it and you uh, give it a try. And it becomes really, really like grayish. And then that means that you actually got uh, opgelicht. What is that? Uh, I, uh, how do you say it? When somebody, uh, you know, sells you something which is not supposed to be that. Uh, yeah, they, then most of the time they put it's earth scams. 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 Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you get scammed. So I always say indigo is a little bit like, I mean, I do not use cocaine, but I know that, you know, there's different qualities. You don't know what you're getting. It depends on the weight and the, you know, um, yeah, you never know what it is. So you need a good uh, supplier, you know. And, uh, and the price fluctuates. Well, it's the same with indigo. So it took me about six years to find a proper good supplier who has certificates, always works with the same uh, farmer. And I get my indigo from uh, Central America and from India. And this particular fat has a combination of both. And the Central American one is amazing quality, like, Leonard's teas from Benzac. I did them with the best quality, of course. <laughs> uh, the Merch Base Final Teas, they're also done with the best quality, but sometimes a combination of both is also just good. So, so is, is the rule of thumb to um, have multiple dips at, at lower times, or can you leave it soaking for? on the five, 10, 20, 30 minutes, does that affect? Uh, yeah, that's a really good question. So it works actually like this. I found out that 
that depends on the quality of indigo. So is your indigo mediocre quality? It does not work like that. It doesn't make any difference if you leave it in longer. If you have a good quality, it does make a difference. So you can leave it in longer and it becomes, yeah, it picks it up more. So it would actually save you on labor. Oh, yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm, going, I'm going in now for the last dip. Yeah, because you know, I don't want to bore you. <laughs> so for, for the bandana you're doing now, if you would have let it just sit in there for the five minutes that you've been talking, would it have the same would it have the same uh, effect? Would the output would be the same way, like the hue. It'd be no. Well, you know what? If I would do that, I think the rice base would just wander off. Okay. So okay. Uh, for this particular case, it doesn't work. Uh, in this indigo fat, it definitely helps that there's good indigo in here. So uh, if I would have a very, very uh, tightly woven fabric, like a canvas or something, it's definitely helping out to use the good indigo because you, you definitely have to, you know, maybe can... Normally, if I would do a shoe, it would take about, you know, I would leave it in about five minutes. And maybe with the good indigo, you can you can maybe you know um, yeah um, play around with that time and the soaking up of the indigo. Right. So we, did these, we did these with my daughter a while ago, um, and they came oh, out pretty dope. Um, oh, oh, but oh. we left them in for like uh, I don't know 10, 15 minutes or so, um, yeah. and then we let it oxidize. Um, but so I was just wondering how you know if we would have left it in longer, or if we would have just like took dips like every 60 seconds or so would yeah. be um, would it catch when well, you know would it catch more would it be a deeper blue yeah and how did it work out for you it worked, it worked out great it was fun a fun project we had blue hands um it was uh it was awesome yeah great oh uh, yeah we use uh yamato in indigo is that the the, the dry freeze one I think so. I think yeah, so. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah, that's actually quite nice because with that dry freeze indigo, you only need to add water and you don't need to make yeah. a whole recipe, right? Yeah, yep. that's amazing yep. stuff. But uh, for us here in Holland, you need to import it. And it's then, you know, a hard thing now, especially with the, yeah, things take a long time to get, right? Right. right now. But then it's also so expensive. But it's nice stuff. It's nice stuff. It hey, looks I'm going gonna, gonna to rinse it out now. Um, so we have to actually go to the rinsing part right. and the battery of my phone is low. Oh, no. <laughs> I always seem to have this problem. Oh, no, no, I'm going to lock the meeting and then I'm going to Okay, so this. Nina is going to log into the meeting and she will go with yeah, us. Okay, we're going to do it. Okay. I'm just gonna start rinsing it. I'm gonna see you in like uh, three seconds. Yeah, but you default out. 